missing anything. Just wanted to point out that the rules say game number four. The game four is the game we're in right now. We've got a, a 2 1 lead for Mentalist at this point. And game four rules tell us that if the game three, if game three had the same civilization spec by both players, we're gonna see a team random. And what it means is both players pick random civilization and the game just makes sure that uh, the civilization is gonna be mirrored. In this case, we've got Franks. Franks is gonna be what we're gonna see here. Franks are gonna be game four on this series between MBL and Menelis. Right now on the point of view of MBL, he's playing here on the left side with the blue color. He's gonna be facing Menelis, red color here at the very right side of the map. Hello, I'm back. <laughs> well, hello, sir. You come just in time to talk about the maps. We've got a Frank Great. War. Yeah. Oh, man. I, I kind of like this, actually. I oh, Franks, man. In 1v1, Franks are really bad, in my opinion. But it's, since it's a Frank War, you're playing with the same tech tree, it doesn't really matter. But, uh, yeah, I like seeing this because you don't see the Franks too often in a 1v1. Uh, it certainly makes for some interesting gameplay. Um, but, yeah, looking at the map once again, then, uh, MBL... Oh, okay. This is uh, quite open on the front. And uh, horrible gold on once more. Horrible gold, in my opinion. <laughs> well, once again, that horrible gold. It's it's always the same with MBL. He gets one lucky map, he takes the win, and then... <laughs> thank you, the thank you, thank you, you wonderful man! ...that he seems to be so, uh, so attracted to. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Boer, for the donation. We appreciate it so much. You've been one of the long supporters of this channel. And uh, thank you so much for your support. It's always very, very much appreciated. And I just once more want to reiterate that every single cent made from this channel is going to be um, it's going to be put straight towards future tournaments. So thank you so much for the support, Mr. Bua. And let's keep talking about the maps. As Just as you pointed out, the gold is really, really not favoring MBL these games. He's been having very, very bad maps. So I guess a good thing this time around, he's got a very nice wood at the back, Zach. So it's a good thing. Yeah, it's not so bad. It, you know, he doesn't really have many other options of where to gather wood, though. So... My concern is, okay, what if a mentalist comes in from this top side or something, you know, uh, what if he starts raiding this wood, where does MBL go next? It's it's a tough decision. Um, the wood on the front is really, really far out, and maybe we'll see MBL playing more aggressively here in this game. But let's take a look at mentalist's map. What do you think of his? Right, taking a look at the mentalist's map, I guess I could say the gold is very far away, but at the back, and he can actually put a TC there, so probably not too terrible. On the negative side, though, seems to be a very open map, I guess. With a lot of yeah. palisades, the left side could be closed, right? Between that stone pile, that gold pile, and between the forest, I guess it could be closed. Uh, but still, the right side, it's very, very open and very... A lot of hills, too. A lot of hills. Yeah, I think both players have got very open maps here, which is what I personally like in an Arabia map. But um, certainly Mentalist with this back gold. Now, usually when you talk about a back, a back gold, um, it's generally a good thing, right? But if your map is so open, sometimes a back gold isn't actually that great. Because in this situation, um, Mentalist is still a long way from his town center. There's no sort of protection from any tree line nearby. Those villagers are gonna be out in the open back there. And since the north side of his base is so open, and since the south side is so open, MBL could easily hit that gold with some raiding units later on. Um, but okay, let's see what happens next. Ooh, There's a what happens is the scale for Mentalist goes down, and uh, oh, that's yeah. really not ideal. For him, he just, well, I guess on the bright side, he knows where MBL is now, but he just <laughs> lost his scout. I guess it's worth yeah, pointing really out. Yeah, that really sucks. Yeah, I guess it's worth pointing out that looks like both players are going to go, are they? Yeah, I can see a barracks up here from, um, from Menelis. It's going up now. What about MBL? Let me go back to his map. No, it doesn't look to me like right, MBL no is going to put a barracks. He's put down a farm, which mostly, most of the times indicates Ooh. that they are not going for a Dark Age rush. Ooh. Considering he's this is interesting though. This is interesting. Twenty-three population. He's doing loom. He'll, I think he'll go up on twenty-three. Two I villages. Uh, I don't know. I, I think, think men at arms. Uh, maybe, maybe. He's got two villages on gold, and he's sent another village out to uh, the, the wood at the back. Mm, we'll it's gonna see. be we'll forward. See. What? It's a, can see a barracks. You're probably right. You're probably right. I guess archers could be a possibility as well. Well, I don't know. Considering only one lumber camp, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, what I'm wondering is why does he go for the left goal? I mean, it's even further away than the front one, uh, and it's not like uh, Menelis is not going to be able to spot it. Well, to be fair, well, 
Nope. That's maybe, the deal. Maybe. That's the deal. He it, can't see it because he yeah. didn't have a scout, right? Well, he doesn't have a scout, and I mean, obviously, NBL doesn't know what Mentalist has scouted so far. Uh, he saw him come in from the front, though, so he knows he definitely saw the front gold. He actually doesn't see the gold on the left, but I think it's probably because the berries and the gold are very close together there. So NBL can just focus, you know, he doesn't have to split his army too much to defend everything at once. He can defend both of them with the same army, if you know what I mean here, on this left side. Yeah, but it seems like NBL will go man at arms. So yeah, like you were that a lot. absolutely right. It's going to be man at arms. And what I don't like in this case is that by the time Mendelis is going to be there, NBL is going to be on feudal age, and that means his rush is going to be quite useless. I guess he's going to head straight into that gold, and that's where the side gold is actually going to play a very important role. So actually, very very good idea here for. MBL to go for the side goal and you can see that Mentalist is gonna shy away with those militia and he does not have a scout and yeah. he will be fighting man at arms certainly a very bad fight for him yeah, exactly. Although he will try and snipe the scout here. He's got the hill. Oh, man. He oh, really got that. Barely MBL. saved it. Barely saved Nicely it. Nicely done. At the last second, moving away. But it just goes to show what difference having the scout in that rush makes. And there's that mana arms upgrade as well. But the question is now, should MBL waste his time chasing these militia around with the mana arms? Or should he immediately counterattack? Uh, as it stands, he's actually going to throw up a forward archery range and get very aggressive on this one. Okay, I like this very much, and I wanted to point out uh, that I absolutely agree with you. I heard Viper say many times, don't ever do defensive men-at-arms. If you do men-at-arms, go forward with them. Try to be aggressive with those men-at-arms. Something MBL not quite yeah. doing here. I guess he doesn't need to be afraid about those militia, right? And he's chasing them away with two men-at-arms. Yeah. Menelis is going to be very happy about this. Was Menelis able to spot the forward, though? No, uh, well, he was not. He has no scout. I don't think he will have continuing to scout around. He doesn't see it, actually. You're right. And also, uh, MBL here adding a few more mana arms in as well. I like this play. Obviously, mana arms fairly weak to archers, though um, it takes a couple of archers to really be quite scary. And since MBL is also adding his own archers in, this could be a really nice push as he immediately forces Mentalist away from the gold. And once again, we see Mentalist taking the gold on the front instead of the one at the back. Yeah, a little bit of a weird option here by Menelis. I'm not sure he was able to see it. Let's, uh, no, he could see it, so it's really a weird option in my opinion. Anyway, Menelis has got a couple of arches, not really enough in my opinion. Uh, the men at arms seem to be doing the damage. The militia are gone. The gold is not there. He's sending a villager that is probably gonna die because the men at arms are right there waiting for it. Nope, he saved it. Five men at arms, a couple of skirmishers. Menelis uh, in a hard spot here, especially if MBL tries to drop a tower on that gold. Yeah, this is really nice because if MBL continues to force Mentalist off of the gold, then Mentalist might start making more skirmishes and suddenly those mana arms look a lot more valuable. Mana arms versus skirms, it's a pretty nice fight for the mana arms, let's be honest. But maybe Mentalist will move to take the gold at the back. And uh, yeah, like we said, it's strange that he took the gold on the front. My guess there is that he was building his ranges close by so he could easily defend it with his army that he's making. But this is a good fight for MBL here. This yeah, could be a very important fight fight here. Let's see what's gonna happen. There's a lot of men at arms here. I can see a lot of archers. I can see a lot of skirmishes. I don't think Menelis is getting a good trade out of this. You can uh, start by taking a look at the number of units that he just lost. He's getting a lot of idle time on those villagers. Many oh, of them are villages. on low HP. And the tower is now up. This could be a very, very, very hard fight here for Menelis. Wow. Yeah, I mean, look at those villagers. They're dropping all over the place Likewise. here. This is huge. Yeah, exactly. And man, Mentalist with a 3 HP villager could get picked as well. Is MBL going to spot that? Surely he spots that villager right there. He's, He's got just, to. On. He's come got on. to. <laughs> it's only 3 HP. He's not focusing on, yet. It's focusing at another one. Well, uh, Mentalist is very brave with that villager engaging wow. in men at arms with only 3 HP. There it is. It's going to go down. <laughs> and uh, looks like Mentalist is sort of surviving, but at what cost? He did lose a lot of economy. You can see the villager numbers. He was ahead by two villagers before the fight started. He's now down by a six. Yeah, I love this. I love this. This is a great play from MBL. It's just exactly what a really aggressive play should be about. You know, throwing in absolutely everything at this. Throwing down a tower on the gold there. Throwing in all this mana arms. Adding in the uh, uh, mix of skirms and archers. At this stage, it's interesting because MBL is clearly, you know, continuing to make um, skirms at this point. That's clearly because there's a lot of skirms out for Mentalist. But the fact that he's denying this gold is, is pretty nice. Uh, though, obviously, if Mentalist keeps making uh, skirms, Skirmishes, it's not going to matter too much until he wants to get to the Castle Age. And of course, skirmishes are the ideal uh, defensive unit. But 
doesn't have fletching. That's a big one. <laughs> yeah, they don't have fletching. It's a very big one. You're very right there. And they cast food, and that means that will delay his castle each time by a tiny bit. And he keeps making skirmishes, gonna delay him even more. I can see that uh, MBL is actually trying to switch into archers. This fight here could be very good for Menelis. He's got the numbers. He's got the number advantage. But just as you mentioned, he's still missing fletching. So engaging those skirmishers and archers with fletching and the tower yeah. might still be too dangerous. Well, he just sent out two villagers to the gold at the back, and now he's building a farm, so he's going to get the gold he needs. He's short by four gold at this stage, but that gold's going to drop in as that farm completes here. Um, at the right side, there you go, he's got 56 now, and uh, he's now going to be able to get that fletching upgrade. It's going to be really important, and I think he's going to do that immediately. Yes. Yeah, there you go, it's on the way. And, uh, man, he... He, once he gets fletching, he might be okay, but uh, he is really feeling the heat, to say the least. Six villagers down still, and it uh, doesn't look like that difference is going to decrease. MBL is certainly not going to be idling his CC. Uh, well, he's idling it because he's housed, and that's why you're <laughs> playing too many hunts. It uh, does not really help you. You need to keep making houses constantly. That is true. Still in a nice population yeah. advantage, especially when it comes to villager count. The military numbers still be, seem to be favoring Menelis, but Menelis just cannot kill villagers with those skirmishes. While MBL can actually kill a couple more, nope, he was just trying to do that, wasn't very successful. Yeah, Mentalist doing padded archer on, but I want to point out just very quickly before they fight again, MBL's woodline at the back, he has so many villagers on that single woodline, it's very, very inefficient. That is costing him a lot of wood in the long run because his villagers will be bumping, they're, you know, traveling a long distance between the lumber camp and the wood, and it's not good for him to have that messy lumber line there. Oh my god, and that mentalist is just, just too much chaos here. The scouts are not going to come into play. So this much. is going to get yeah. really ugly. He comes back with a mentalist with a skirmish just from behind. This could be an act actually very good fight. It was not looking very good for him. I didn't see the number of skirmishes that he had behind. Bringing in the villagers is going to cause him a little bit more idle time, but maybe he might just be able to clear oh. all the army that MBL has got there. He's got balls of steel as he rushes down. Oh that, boy, uh, you can say tower. that. Jeez, look at that. The villagers, they don't care. They want him off of his turf. But MBL, sneakily at the back, he's building another tower. And while Mentalist rushes down the tower on the front, MBL's just going to throw another one up in the wood line there. And oh, wow. Okay, so MBL's going to fail that tower now, surely. Surely. Yeah, uh, looks like. No. Uh, yeah, the fight yeah, was definitely yeah. in favor of Menelis this time around. Uh, looks like the number of villagers is just uh, the advantage for MBL is just decreased. So all in all, looks like it was a very, very nice fight here for Menelis. He had so many skirmishes garrisoned inside the archery ranges, and that made a huge difference. Yeah, exactly. He popped them out at the last time, uh, last second, and MBL was kind of, you know, in a bit too far. And um, exactly what we we're talking about before. You go in too far, and you can't get out safely. And MBL just could not get out without taking huge losses, and now he's falling right back to his forward archery ranges, and he's down by a nine military count at this stage. Quite a big difference, and do keep in mind the villager has just decreased. It's now the same amount of villagers, so that was an incredibly important fight here uh, for Menelis. He seems to be back into the game. Let's take a look at the resources. MBL and Menelis seem to be rather rather close when it comes to resources. They've got roughly the same amount of food, and it uh, looks like MBL's got a little bit more gold, and that means they might just be reaching Castle H at the same time. Yeah, it's actually really good for Mentalist to just bring it back like that. It looked like he was in a lot of trouble, but then suddenly, out of nowhere, takes that uh, the army advantage. He pushes MBL right back. And bear in mind, MBL even had the scouts. But for me, the reason Mentalist won that fight is because he brought those villagers in to fight as well. It's sometimes you know really risky. You don't want those villagers to go into combat because you don't want to lose them. But if it makes a difference between losing the fight and winning the fight, it's best to send the villagers in sometimes. And against skirmishes, you know, it takes 40 skirmisher shots to kill a villager. Um, it, it's sometimes the better choice to actually fight with those vills. Right, that was a very important and nice decision for Menelis. If those were archers, there would be no way yeah. they could actually win the fight. He would lose a lot of villagers. But being only skirmishers looks to be like it was the right decision. And MBL keeps losing left and right a couple of those skirmishers. He definitely wants to make sure that he's not going to lose any more unnecessarily. He's the first one to click up to Castle Age. And what about yeah, Monolith? he did wheelbarrow. I want to point out he did wheelbarrow quite a while ago. So I think MBL, you know, he's very close on wooden food. But if you look at his gold gathered and his stone gathered, he's way ahead right there. So I think MBL overall definitely has this eco advantage still. Um, MBL, MBL also has a lot less idle time this game. Mentalist with 32 minutes of idle time apparently compared to MBL's just 20. 
All right, let's see how well this fight go here for MBL. The, uh, the Spearmen are too far away to try to be helpful. He might just lose too many skirmishers before they can actually overtake the army from MBL. That was a little bit of a miss play there for Menelis, in my opinion. He lost a little bit too much. He really didn't need to lose so many. You can see the military numbers are now fairly similar. 12, 11 for MBL, only 12. Ah, and there he goes, wasting a couple of scouts. Anyway, Zero, we're heading up to Castle H. I guess we're expecting to see knights, right? Yeah, well, I, yeah, I, yeah, obviously Franks. I mean, I, I was still taken aback by the fact they're playing as the Franks right now. So I was like thinking, mm, would they go Knights? But no, they're the Franks, so it's so obvious. But let's be uh, keep it real here as well. Um, there's still a lot of skirmishes out for MBL. Now, obviously, it's going to be really wasteful to upgrade these guys if... Mentalist goes for knights because they'll get cut down, but he may as well try and do what he can with them while he still can. MBL gonna try and come in on this right hand side, do as much damage as he can before they these guys become toast, and uh, he at least will delay this second stable from going up for a little while, that's for sure. Yeah, there it is, and uh, as this, just as we mentioned, knights are gonna be, he's got two stables pumping knights all the time, he's still missing the plus to upgrade, the plus to armor something, the players want to have as fast as possible, even though considering he's only gonna be fighting skirmish, it's probably not a huge deal not having the plus two. I'm dying to see where is MBL gonna send those knights, looks like that is gonna be straight into the wood line here of Menelis. Menelis has got a couple of spearmen, but they're far away, I guess he's heading back with them. Uh, this fight could be interesting and could could decide many things actually. Yeah, like clearly at this stage, you know, the knights coming in for MBL first. This is kind of a big deal because it's going to be keeping mentalist in the defensive position. And oftentimes, you know, you really want to be the aggressor in this game. These skirmishes can actually do a really good job of picking off the spearmen the right spearmen, now. The spearmen, so right. And that's going to be really huge because it, it just means that MBL is going to be able to focus or keep as much HP on these knights as possible and focus on killing mentalist knights with his own knights. Um, but for the time being, yeah, he's just holding onto this hill on the right side. He's trying to do as much as he can with these skirms before they get cut down and uh, MBL is just going to keep the uh, pressure on, keep sending those knights over and uh, both players at this point on two stables with Mentalist actually adding in a monastery right now which is a fantastic, fantastic choice. Looks to me like Manal is actually holding, he's holding for now, he's of course fighting in his own base and that means he will have reinforcements a lot faster than MBL will. Hey, he seems to have the numbers. Many of those knights are in very low HP. I don't know if that is going to scare MBL away. I don't think so. It looks to me like MBL can actually win this fight. He's bringing a couple more from back. More. Yeah, he's bringing two more. And I still don't see a monk. Monk is going to take a very, very long time until they're out of that monastery. And that means MBL can just keep on killing knights. And knights, good, good job here by MBL sending two more. And Manalise is going to be in trouble here. He seems to be behind with the villagers as well. It's eight villager advantage for MBL at this point. Yeah, this is good. MBL also, though, plus two defense, whereas uh, Mentalist just has plus one. But as soon as uh, Mentalist starts bringing out those monks, MBL really won't want to throw those knights away. And it's not just throwing your knights away if you get converted. It's also giving your opponent an additional knight as well. So it's doubly bad. It's a huge deal. It. It's a huge deal, yeah. And so he's going to be really careful here in going in. But he still has the upgrade advantage. So he can still fight toe-to-toe -to -toe with Mentalist's knights. He's just got to be very careful of the monks at this point and uh, we should now look I think at economy situation yeah, just I, to see who can keep this up. I was just trying to take a look at it I can see two TC's are up for MBL a third one going uh, right here at the front on that gold I guess I saw three TC from Menelis too there it is one TC on the gold a third one here on the wood line it's a good job by Menelis he was able to hold off that very heavy pressure from MBL but he did suffer a little bit right now we can see there's a quite a significant difference in the number of villagers it's 14 villagers advantage for MBL. Yeah, and MBL here, if you just look at his economy at the back, he's just a lot of farming going on, he looks pretty a comfortable back there. It's really just very nicely laid out, and it's, for him, he, he's not had the pressure, so, you know, when you're, when you're, when you're defending and you're feeling the heat, everything gets a little more messy, you know, you don't ha quite have as much time to think about where you're going to place those buildings down and things, you just put them down quickly because you need to defend and focus on microing your army or whatever, so, uh, yeah, MBL looking pretty comfortable at the moment, but I still think, you know, Mentalist did a good job of pushing him back, and MBL also adding in a monastery of his own, could be interesting, and on the left side, Mentalist yeah. writing the gold. Sneaky little raid here, sneaky nice. little raid, but incredibly important, he's going to kill so many villagers. 
That was I, successful. That was yeah, great. I do wonder why didn't NBL protect that spot a little bit better. He was just about to make an outpost. NBL an outpost. <laughs> um, looks like that was a little bit too late for him. He's now going to be able to chase away the Knights for him mentally. But he did lose a whole lot of villagers. But still, he's got a nice and comfortable advantage when it comes to the economy. Yeah, something that NBL does very well a lot of the time. Given the chance, uh, you know, NBL, if he gets a free boom, he's going to boom very, very effectively, very efficiently. He's good at that, um, for sure. But right now, it's worth noting that, you know, these knights have got uh, still only plus one defense for Mentalist at this point. So they're not going to be quite as tanky as they perhaps would like to be underneath these town centers. But he will kill a couple of villages in the wood line of NBL as NBL tries to push forward and, you know, decides to retreat back to his hill on the front. It looks like the push in the forward is still going to wait a little bit more. I see a fourth TC going up here. A little bit of an awkward spot. I was actually hoping to see it on the gold, on that forward gold. Oh yeah, he's found his sheep. <laughs> yeah, he's found his sheep. It's a little bit of an awkward spot, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. The, yeah, the wood line was safe already. I don't really see a necessity to put a TC there. Anyway, TCs are not only for protection, they're also good to make villagers. That's their primary objective, and he's going to be doing that. And uh, once more, take a look at the villager count. Looks like Metalus is pulling up ahead, actually. He's now only six villagers behind, and it used to be 14 villagers, so nice job. He's got a whole lot of monks here, Zag. He's going to be engaging that army of knights from MBL. MBL seems to be missing a couple of monks, maybe. I think what MBL needs, or oh, sorry, what Mentalist needs right now is a really nice fight. If he can bring the monks into play, I mean, he's got, what, three, four monks four, here? Four, I can see four. That could completely turn the tide of this battle. It's 19, 20 military versus 15. You can see that, you know, with MBL adding in that fourth TC, perhaps he's going to be going a little bit lighter on the knights, and there's one of those castles from Mentalist on the front as well, using those cheaper castles that the Franks get uh, to get that up just a little sooner as he pushes in now. This is good to be a really good fight actually. Let's see how well this play out. I do, did wish that Metalist would be a little bit more ambitious with that castle. He's going to be using the monks. I mean, it's four of them and MBL does not seem to have a single one. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I think Metalist needs to pull back, at least until he's got that yeah. castle up. Has now. And uh, he's losing a couple monks. Uh, not sure he was able to convert any knights. But anyway, monks are not only good to convert, they're good for healing too. Yeah, I think he could have done more there in that fight. To be honest, I think he could have done more. I think if he waited for the monks and, and kind of just took his time pushing forwards a little more, he could have got a few more conversions and it could have gone a little better. I noticed he actually converted one knight with three monks, so maybe a little bit of a, a poor micro there. But still, Mentalist here, he's actually just retaken the score lead. And obviously, you know, score doesn't tell us everything, but it's certainly a positive sign for Mentalist at this point. It's to me like he's sending a couple of knights here from the left side, probably trying to go to the same place where he was happy before, killing so many villagers there from the left oh, side yeah, of MBL's of base. He's gonna go there once more, probably gonna get a couple of villagers. Does not seem to me like MBL is expecting this. MBL on the other side seems to start concentrating on Pikeman, not just yet Pikeman. He's got the resources to go up. I'm not sure if he's only missing a building. No, he's got the building, so he can just click up. There it is. Imperial Age for MBL. Yeah, he's going up now. This is interesting though, because if Mentalist gets super aggressive at this point, it could be huge. Clearly, at this stage, you know, each workshop coming up on the front, there's barracks coming up all over the place, he's starting to make pikemen. Maybe he's just trying to tip the balance here, whilst MBL is possibly weaker, since he's invested so much now into that Imperial Age technology, and he doesn't quite have as many resources to invest into military. But look at this, even throwing Axemen coming out at the moment, and you don't see that every day. And uh, that might actually be a very nice option here. We did see it a couple of times on the Masters of Arena. I did see it a couple of times. Looks like uh, Metalist has been watching those games. And speaking of Masters of Arena, I want to remind you guys, after this match, there will be the final of the Masters of Arena between uh, the Viper and Lois. You guys definitely don't want to miss that one. But let's just uh, stick to this game. As I just mentioned before, that's a very nice. important point. Uh, people going up uh, to Imperial Age while being pushed can be very, very risky option. But that castle seems to be very nice for Minalist. Yeah, another castle here, and this is cool because if you look at MBL's barracks, he's starting to make a lot of pikemen. And if there's one thing that throwing axemen are good at, it's taking out trash. They take out the trash day in, day out. Um, and seriously, th this could be huge for Mentalist if he makes a good play here. Uh, pushing in now with the ram, he's going for the TC. He could push MBL off of this gold. Obviously, his castle's laying out the damage as well. And now they're throwing axemen coming in from the back. And I really he's gonna win. Mentalist he's gonna win the fight. This. <laughs> He's gonna win it. He's gonna win it, in my opinion. It's too many castles, too many Axemen, and it looks like MBL is gonna need to retreat. 
And that's a very, very important fight for Menelis. He's gonna have the momentum. Menelis. He's gonna have yeah. the momentum. He might even get enough stone for a third castle that he could yeah. just place right on top exactly. of that hill and get control exactly. of the gold. I think he will do that. And this is the thing now. What is the Imperial Age upgrade for NBL um, at this stage? Nothing. Like it, it, it means nothing right now. Until he can get the upgrades, until he can get some army to upgrade. And at this point, Mentalist needs to capitalize on this momentum. He needs to really keep pushing forwards and push hard. And, uh, you know, for him right now, the Imperial Age is secondary objective to uh, to getting this push and keeping the pressure on to NBL. And don't let him get um, too much advantage from those Imperial Age technologies. And another nice raid is going to be happening here by Menelis. If he sees this on time, a lot of unprotected villagers, and I do see that MBL tends to do this a lot, just drop farms randomly across the map. Uh, happily for him, looks like <laughs> Menelis was not able to spot that. That could have been a very oh, nice raid. Oh, the castle is even With more in. Oh, I don't know. I love it. Uh, uh, it's not it's not it's not a perfect castle it's just it's a, it's a cool castle he's castle pushing mbl i mean it's, it's forward sort of it's very forward yeah exactly. very forward very ambitious i would just hope it would be protecting the gold but then again mbl does not really have any army to try to protect yeah. that gold that gold belongs to menelis at this point yeah. Check up the north as well. Mentalist trying to raid with some knights, but look at this. Mentalist up to the Imperial Age now as well. And really at this point, Mentalist is looking so good at right now. Honestly, this is looking fantastic. Uh, village account is basically the same. Mentalist has about 20 more military units, and he's just castle pushing after castle pushing after castle pushing and MBL still doesn't have a single castle yet he's putting one up on the left hand side and uh, I think Mentalist if he has enough eco he can get out a treb pretty quickly and go straight for that castle with the trebuchet but uh, do I actually hear I do bombard cannons yep, from I just uh, heard it too just heard it too and he probably is going to be trying to take down those castles it does not seem to me like he's got enough numbers, military numbers for MBL, only 24, and he's losing villages left and right. This more. Look, yeah, look how many <laughs> villages, which is absolutely <laughs> unprotected, randomly across the map, and he's hurting, he's hurting a lot. Um, MBL probably a bit too ambitious. Uh, he shouldn't have gone Imperial Age when he was not safe at all. Yeah, I mean, it's always easy to say in hindsight, uh, you know, it's, it's so easy to say, oh yeah, but he shouldn't have done, but I, I think, yeah, you're right, I mean, a mentalist really just capitalized on that, he, he just kind of got that feeling that, that MBL was feeling a little low on military, that he may have just clicked up to MP, could have even seen it in the scores, and he thought, right, I'm just gonna go, uh, go ham and just push as hard as I can, and it's actually worked out really, really well at the moment. He's got a good villager lead now, a great military lead still, and now he's just himself hit the Imperial Age and he can immediately start on those upgrades, but MBL... Still gonna go for another pushback on those castles in the middle of the map. Could be a nice attempt here by MBL. He's got the Bombard Cannons, he's got a couple of ramps. Those ramps are cap ramps. Ah, uh, throwing Exmar are quite good against the Rams, but probably not as good against the Bombard Cannons, and we do know that MBL loves to micro, so he's probably gonna do a good job with those Bombard Cannons. Gonna make sure that he stays behind his Rams, gonna fire a couple of shots at those Axemen, but it's just too many, it's just too many, the Rams yeah, are gonna be gone. Be, yeah, exactly, I, he's gonna lose the, the capped Rams, the, the castle will stay up, and uh, Mentalist still has 600 uh, stone in the bank, so it's enough to throw another castle down if he wants to. Uh, on the left side, MBL's got out a Treb now, which means he will try and take down the castle of Mentalist on the front. Mentalist with a capped ram won't take down the trap from MBL, but right now, yeah, MBL is, is looking like he's definitely on the back foot. Mentalist's economy is doing great. He's not really feeling any pressure from any raiding, and he can just focus his entire attention on pushing MBL back against the edge of the map. Fair play to MBL to just stay alive for such a long time. I mean, his economy is hurting, of course. He's got a couple of idle villagers, uh, but he's still got a decent amount of them. He's got 100 villagers. I can see in my overlay he's got 26 military units. What kind of army composition would you go for in this case? He's going, seems to be going for well, hand cannoneers hand and, bomb and BBC. Cannons. What do you think? Yeah. It's actually it's pretty nice versus throwing X-Men. I mean, it's a pretty strong unit composition, but Mentalist is one step ahead of the game at this point. Mentalist is doing Cavalier right now, and uh, I think that could be pretty huge. Cavalier coming in here. Uh, MBL has no reason to do the Halberdier upgrade at this stage. Well, why would he? He's only against throwing X-Men, but those Cavalier, they could absolutely tear through this army of Bombard Cannons and Hand Cannons. They can raid really well, and of course, since they're the Franks, they have most HP of any Cavalier 
player in the game as well. So this could be pretty huge now. He's going to go for that treb on the left side and he's just going to keep raiding. And I think we'll see MBL trying to do that Halberdier upgrade as fast as he can now. But it's looking very dangerous for him as these Cavaliers start to come through. He does not seem to have the resources for that just yet. I know he did wish for it. Man, at least it just... Uh, make it a secret out of those Cavaliers for a little bit yeah, longer. longer. Wait until he's got like 30 Cavalier, maybe. I know it's very easy to speak when there's nothing on the line for us, <laughs> but uh, I really would have wished for him to wait a little bit longer. He did not do that. And by doing that, he actually yeah. gave it away. And uh, looks to me like MBL actually had enough Pikemen to sort of sustain that, sustain that attack. There's a lot of he's doing a good job. on the left side of uh, MBL. More dead villagers. He's down to 85 builds now. Men's list on 131. And at this stage of the game, that eco difference is massive. I think a mentalist is just going to pull ahead at this point. Yeah, I think that castle is definitely going to go down, but then again, that mentalist doesn't fall, really care anymore about the castles, right? I mean, they're still good to, uh, for protective measures, but it seems to me like he's going to be going for uh, uh, maybe even paladins. I don't know. Certainly cavalier. He seems to be investing in cavalier, as you can see from his stables. All of them yeah. are producing cavalier. They're also doing chemistry, though, so I, it's interesting because at this and point, you've got to remember... Yeah, possibly. I think Mentalist is trying to play a game where he's baiting MBL to make a certain unit and then he can try and counter that himself. In this situation, MBL is doing Halberdier now. It's the logical thing to do when you see the Cavalier from your enemy, but maybe Mentalist will counter with some hand cannons of his own. Uh, that's certainly something I would like to see. Or maybe, you know, maybe he's just going to try and hold out for that Paladin upgrade. Uh, but I think that might be a little ambitious. Let's try to see that. Uh, it looks to me like he might oh, just he, be able to get another castle. Yeah, well, yeah. Menelaus just lost his courage. He wanted to go in and try to snipe those bomber cannons. Just too dangerous. What I do like from Menelaus is trying to take control of the gold across the map. You can see he just put a castle right there at the very left side of the map yeah. where there's a nice, nice little gold. Very, very nice uh, positional playing here from Menelaus. He seems to be charging now Paladin. onto those helmets. And he's doing Paladin as well. This is huge. Actually, yeah, I mean, why would he do Troy? Uh, bleh. Why would he do uh, hand cannon? when he has these throwing axemen. This is a great fight for Mentalist right now. He's got the hill. He's going to be using the throwing axemen to focus the halves. He's using the cavalier to take down the hound cannons. And Paladin is on the way oh boy. as well. And as you said, he's also got the two gold piles on the left. So gold has to be running dry for MBL right now. How many gold miners does he have? Well, actually zero. At this zero. Point. And this is no huge. relics, no relics whatsoever, and it looks to me like Menelaus is going to have gold for ages, and that gold is going to be invested into those incredibly strong paladins. <laughs> such oh, a good yeah. raiding unit, such good fighting units, looking dire, looking very, very dire for MBL. Yeah, this is really good for Mentalist right now. Uh, just leave me wondering why he w got chemistry. I mean, he's added a single Bombard Cannon, um, but I guess really that's a minor, minor thing. Um, at this stage, MBL is basically out of army. He's got a few halves coming out, but against these Throwing Axemen, they're really not going to do a whole lot. And uh, with Paladin on the way as well, it's just going to be... Uh, a they're going to be able to crush the left side of uh, MBL's economy. Um, you know, even if MBL has... A a bunch of halves. Um, he only has plus one attack, plus two defense. Against fully upgraded paladins, paladins are still gonna win, man. There it is, the paladin. And aren't those a beauty? They just look awesome. And that's the GG call. The GG. series goes for Menalist after a stunning performance from this guy. Who would have thought this? You did mention it at the beginning that MBL was theoretically the strongest guy in this matchup. Uh, but... What a what an amazing play from Menelaus, and just as you pointed out before, he might not be the fastest guy, he might not be the guy who possesses the best micromanagement in the world, but he knows what fights to take, and he knows when to take fights, and when not to take fights. I'm very, very, very impressed by Menelaus' performance this series so far. Yeah, exactly. I mean, bear in mind, he... <laughs> He just took MBL right there. He did take Riot as well, and that could mean... I mean, I don't want to speculate too far in advance, but that could mean that Mentalist could even win this group. Like, come out, out number one position, even with having um, Slam... Uh, sorry, not Slam. Even having Riot and Tim in the same group. He could still come out on top. It all depends on that Tim versus Riot game, I guess. Anyway, awesome performance. I'm uh, still taking a look at the achievements right here. We can see that, the, once more, the military 
achievement, the military score was just heavily in favor of Manalist. He did have a lot more villagers as well. It's 150 villagers against only 100 villagers from MBL. I just, that was really decisive, right? He knew when he needs to charge. He put those two castles right there just on top of MBL's gold. He went aggressive, he went risky, and he got the reward that he wanted to. 3 1. It uh, was an amazing series, and uh, thank you so much for being here with me, Zach. I think you need to get ready for the Masters of Arena, yeah, right? Yeah, I have to go. <laughs> uh, so thank you very much. It was a lot of fun. Um, but yes, like I say, uh, Masters of Arena.